Are you one of those people that prefer texting over talking on a cell phone? Do you like the idea of ham radio? Maybe the building part or the experimenting with RF, but the idea of talking to random people? Picking up a microphone and calling out to have a chit chat with some random person? You find that kind of intimidating or not interesting? Well, today's video is for you because today I'm leaving the microphone in the bag. That's right, I'm gonna be making HF contacts, high frequency contacts, hundreds, maybe even thousands of miles away, hopefully, without using a microphone. We're gonna be doing digital mode, specifically FT8. And I have to tell you that FT8 is one of my favorite parts of the hobby. I really enjoy it. And we're gonna do three things in this video. Number one, I'm gonna explain my setup for FT8, or at least one of my setups for FT8. I'm gonna explain how FT8 works, then I'm gonna make a few contacts. It's gonna be fun, let's get going. I'm happy to announce that today's video is sponsored by xggcoms.com. They were kind enough to send me some of the equipment I needed to make today's video. XGGcoms.com specializes in selling high quality, great value equipment to interface your computer with your HF radio and control it. They work with radios like Kenwood, Yezu, Icom, Waxon, and they sent me equipment for my Zygu. Check them out, head over to their site and check out what they have. Thanks XGGcoms.com. To get started with FT8 or digital modes, you're gonna need a high frequency radio. You can do digital modes with UHF and VHF, but that's not where the action is. You're gonna to wanna to get on HF. So you're gonna need your general license in the United States or in your country, whatever license gets you access to the high frequency bands. You're also gonna need a radio. In my case, I'm using my Zygu X5105. This is a HF plus six meter transceiver it's an all-in-one unit it has a battery and uh, antenna tuner built into it this is my go-to portable transceiver you can see how small it is it puts out five watts i really like this radio in addition to the radio you're going to need some type of hf antenna and in my case i'm going to be using the chameleon cha f loop the Chameleon Cha F loop is a magnetic loop antenna. It's highly portable. I can put it in a backpack and it's uniquely suited for digital modes. Uh, the magnetic loop antennas are really sensitive and whatever frequency you're on, you kind of have to adjust uh, the antenna for every frequency. Doing digital modes, you're gonna tend to stay on the free, same frequency. So that means less, less adjusting of the antenna. Works great. You also need a computer. And with part of the computer, you're going to have to interface your radio to your computer. And the way I do it is with this XGGcoms.com USB Digimode 3. This is an isolated sound card. Uh, this acts as the sound card for your computer. So when your computer generates the tones, it's generating using the XGGcoms uh, Digimode. And then it interfaces right into the radio. They also sent me a USB cat control cable. One side is USB for the computer, the other plugs into the cat control of the radio, and this allows my computer to key up the push to talk uh, and control what frequency I'm on as well. Last but not least, you are gonna need a piece of software called WSJTX by K1JT. Uh, this is the software that you're gonna need to do uh, FT8 and it can also do some other digital modes, but we're focusing in on FT8 today. FT8 uses something called FSK, Frequency Shift Keying, to convert messages or little snippets of information into noise to send it out over the HF bands. And this is what it sounds like. The messages are split up into 15 second uh, units. Every 15 seconds a message is sent either by you or by the person you're communicating with. There's 13 seconds of transmission and two seconds of decoding. So I'm going to use the 30 meter band for a little bit here. I'm going to try it. It works usually works really well with my mag loop antenna and it's not quite as crowded as the 20 and 40 meter bands. Uh, I can get some better results sometimes. But anyways what I wanted to do is was let you hear what FT8 sounds like on the receive. 
That's receiving multiple FT8 signals from multiple radios. There are two different ways you can use FT8. You can call CQ by clicking CQ right here and then enabling TX, enabling transmit, which I'll do right now, or you can answer CQs. I tend to do a little bit of both, depending on how much traffic there is. If there's no new CQ calls out there, I'll go ahead and call CQ for a while. Otherwise, I will uh, wait for somebody to call CQ and answer on them. All right, so we got a QSO going finally. N1CLG uh, called out CQ. I responded with uh, my grid square. He's in FN41, which is 902 miles away. I responded with uh, his signal report, minus 19. He responded with mine, minus 9. And on this signal, I should get a 73. Let's see. There it is. He sent 73, uh, RR73. You can see right there, he sent uh, RR73. I'm going to send him 73 back, and there's a window to log the contact. And I just click OK on that window, and boom, that's a QSO. It happens just that quick. Um, yeah, so the whole contact can take uh, less than a minute. Uh, he sends CQ. I respond with my grid square. He responds with a signal report. I respond with a signal report, and boom, just like that. Uh, there's a uh, there's a contact now you can see he's calling CQ again and now his color is green because I've already made contact with him simple stuff one of the absolutely best parts about working FTA digital modes is the fact that you don't need to make contacts to confirm that your equipment's working so you can see up here that I called CQ a number of times on the 30 meter band and I didn't get a response so what I can do is go to a website called PSK Reporter, and I'll put a link in the description. But I can go to PSK Reporter, and I can put in the band I'm working, and I can put signals sent by, and then my call sign, and then I can set a time frame, and then I can hit go. And what that will do is actually pinpoint the stations around the world that have reported hearing my signal. And it gives me a time frame as well, so you can see right here. I'm getting up into Minnesota, Arizona, Texas, uh, nowhere in the southeast really, a little bit in Florida. So my signal is definitely getting out on the 30 meter band. But for whatever reason, uh, people aren't responding to me or a lot of times they've just set up monitoring stations that uh, don't have the capability or they're not working FT8 right now. They're just monitoring the bands and reporting into PSK Re Reporter. So really neat feature for testing antennas, testing setups. I don't even need to make contacts to know my setup is working. As you can see right here, some of the entries are color coded and that's because somebody I've never made contact before on FT8 is calling CQ. Uh, KK5JY is calling CQ. He's not in my logbook. Oh, and he just responded to me. Uh, let's see if I can get this contact. So I had responded to him twice and he didn't respond back. But then all of a sudden this red came up, meaning he called me and you can see he sent K4BBL, KK5JY, and he sent me my signal report, which is minus 15. And I responded, KK5JY, K4BBL, R minus 17, which again is his signal report. So if, uh, if he receives that, and he didn't receive it the first time, I'm sending the same message again. We're dealing with uh, sounds here that are under the noise level. Uh, the minus 17 report and minus 15 report means we're we are under the noise and the computer is doing the heavy lifting here decoding these so let's hope i get a contact out of this the bands are trash again today uh really bad conditions no sunspots no he's not hearing me so that contact's not going to work here's an important tip for those of you just starting to work fta you want to monitor your waterfall and your waterfall shows the bandwidth uh, that your radio is hearing and you see those little dots in the waterfall those are all signals coming in so that means people are using that tiny little bandwidth right there uh, to transmit so if you're going to transmit your cq make sure you pick an open space where nobody else is transmitting otherwise you'll be interfering with their signal and probably won't be heard 
So you can see right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump into this spot right there between those two signals and use that tiny little bit of bandwidth. But make sure you do that. Here's one of the things I like most about FT8. It was designed as a low power mode. That means that using just five watts and a compromised antenna, because it uses such a narrow bandwidth, my power is concentrated and it goes further than it would if I were trying to make voice contacts. All right, I got another QSO going here. It's KK5JY again. Um, he called out CQ. I responded with my grid square. He came back with a minus 17 uh, signal report. I sent him plus six, and let's see if he received that. If he did, he should come back with RR73, which means received and uh, best regards. And if he does that, yep, there it is. So he sent RR73, now I'm sending 73 to him, and that'll wrap up the QSO really quick, really easy. You can see my log popped up here, and I can go ahead and log that contact and then when I'm all done I can upload that to logbook of the world all right so got a final QSO going here with WZO TLR he's 493 miles away uh, he was sending CQ I answered with my grid sign he came back with a signal report of minus 12 I gave him a minus 9 and now he should be sending RR73 we'll see if that happens here comes the message 12, 13, decode. Oh, no, he sent minus 12 again, which means he did not get my signal report of R minus nine. So uh, I'm sending it again. This time it's an eight. We'll see if he gets it this time. And when that's up, hopefully it'll say RR73 so that I know he received my signal report. Nope, it's gonna be a busted contact again. I don't know what happened. Either the band dropped out or interference or uh, it looks like somebody else, yeah, he started sending CQ again, so another busted contact. Just when I say that, look at that. He sent RR73, I'm sending 73 and I can go ahead and log this contact. Uh, again, 493 miles, radio to radio, no repeater, no internet, uh, just FT8. So really cool stuff. So that is FT8, one of my favorite operating modes in all of ham radio. FT8 is awesome because with low power, if you're working QRP or portable, you can make more contacts more reliably, even when we're at the bottom of the current sunspot cycle. FT8 is also being allowed in more and more contests. In fact, this summer during field day, I worked my club's FT8 six meter station and made some contacts for the club that way. So more and more contests are allowing FT8 contacts to count. I really enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Maybe you learned something or I hope you liked uh, what I did. If you did, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave me a like, I'd appreciate it. This is K4BBL. I'm clear, 7-3.